This is Al McGee with YETicket.com. Well, The Red Suitcase is a very, very good short film, but I have the director here. I have Cyrus Nesbitt, and he's yeah. from Luxembourg, or he's in Luxembourg, and we're going to talk about his film. How are you doing today, Cyrus? Thank you very much. Yeah, I live in Luxembourg, originally from Iran, and grew up here. Oh, nice. <clears throat> Well, tell us a little bit about the story. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, I wanted to do a movie about an Iranian girl uh, because uh, the subject was for me very interesting. Uh, one year ago, we were not hearing what, has, what was happening uh, to the woman in Iran. And uh, my parents were always connected to Iran and here and there, they were always talking to me that uh, you know, some woman disappeared and we don't know what happened. I said, it's awful. I have to do something connected so to women. So that's how uh, the idea of the movie uh, started. Okay. Well, you know, I like uh, what you did with the film now uh, and the story behind it. I'm going to give a little bit away about the film because I, I, th I thought it was very, very interesting. We see this young lady, she's in the airport and there's a red suitcase going around, but we, there is some indication that it is hers, but she doesn't want to pick it up. Why is that? Uh, yeah, we wanted to, to create some uh, confusion that uh, perhaps uh, there is something with this red suitcase. Perhaps we think uh, there is something illegal but uh, in the head of this girl, taking the luggage means going out. So she's pushing this moment to not go out to this new world where she doesn't want to go. But on the other hand, we could think there is something wrong with the luggage. So this confusion was interesting in the beginning. Right, and also she's getting phone calls from her father. You know, her father's kind of worried about her. And you know, yeah. what, so the, why, uh, go ahead. Yeah, so first when we get the phone call of the father, the audience could even think that the father is waiting for her. Where are you? Why are you late? So we would think that perhaps uh, she, the father is waiting for her. So we don't know really, but uh, we know that uh, she has this hijab and she speaks Persian and she's arriving very late. So this creates all this intrigue, what's going on. Right, and, and, uh, and well, then she goes into the bathroom, she makes a few changes to herself. So as though she didn't wanna be recognized. Now, but this is a 16 year old young lady. Now here in the United States, to us a 16 year old lady, young lady is still a baby to many people. Uh, you know, because we got laws now where 16 year olds really can't work unless they have parents permission and things like that. But in this situation, she's traveling all by herself and she's waiting on, you know, uh, her husband, basically there at the airport. She's 16 years of age. And to me, that is kind of dramatic to see a young lady like that facing all these possibilities of not having a normal life that, you know, that we project here in the United States. Sure, different countries have their own rules about young ladies, young people, because I know in many countries, young ladies get married 12 years old, 13 years old. In fact, my, my aunt had her first child when she was 13 but that was in the 1920s. But anyway, we feel that a 16 year old young lady has a whole lot ahead of herself if she does it the normal way. Is that, is that how she's feeling? So uh, the, <clears throat> the basic idea is the parents decided for her. So, and the, the, in, in these countries, there is so much tradition that this girl is not, cannot go against it. She cannot go against the patriarchal decision to keep her hijab for the hair, for the religion. And, uh, and she somehow has to uh, trust the decision of this father 
to go somewhere where the life could be better. But deep inside, we understand that's not where she wanted to go. And this brings also that she cannot go to the police. She cannot do anything because she grew up in these uh, traditions. And that's why also it's so difficult for her to go away from this. She needs so long time to take these decisions. And I guess in Europe, if the father is saying you will marry this guy, the girl is saying, peace off, I'll do whatever I want, you know. And this is not happening uh, to this because uh, she uh, grew up with all these traditions. Yeah. And in fact, that, that young lady, she's a very good actress. Her name is... Uh... With a Noel Evad, uh, tell us her name. Yeah, Noel Evad. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, she really took to this script. I mean, the emotions that she displayed as the character in this uh, particular film, uh, it was truly believable. And the character is uh, Ariane, or uh, how you say it? Is it Ariane? Yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, she really portrayed this young lady. So how did you, what, what did she show you to say she is the right person for this part? I uh, did in the casting this scene when you take this uh, hijab off because this was the crucial moment of the movie. And there I wanted to see how they could feel about taking this hijab off. And she was really... Uh, when she was taking this off, you know, she had tears coming in her eyes, but they were not, it was not too much, it was not too less. And actually, I felt that uh, it's her. And um, yeah, and when we prepared the role, it was also very interesting to work with her because um, she asked me a lot of questions. And I was also there, I invited the guy who was doing the actor, so they were confronted. And I wanted her to go all in all these uh, feelings. And, and, and still, all this is not seen in the face of the actor, the character, you know, because, you know, to keep uh, also a very a, a nice uh, surface where you don't see everything through. Yeah. You're right. Uh, she really did a lot in this film to really, well, to make me feel for her. I really felt for this character. I was afraid for this character. I wanted her to get a rape because of her fear and my thoughts of what what's happening, what's going on. And as the film went on, it, it, you know, it played out what a lot of the scenarios in this film. But I was rooting for her. I wanted her to to succeed. And is that what you wanted her to do? To succeed in this film to show people that this is what's happening to young girls this is not only happening to young girl this is happening to a young girl in a very rich country so this uh, difference it's what very important and also when it's also a metaphor everything about what's going on in iran the decision for her in this bathroom to take this this hijab from her head it's a very very important act because this is what all the women are scared to do because of mm -hmm. this and also it was very important for to, to do this for her because she has to go against the father against tradition against religion against everything but at the end of the day to get to be free so these things were was very important and actually related today it's even more actual because in Iran, actually, all the women are trying to take the hijab off and to show that they want to be free. Yeah, I mean, I hear that in the news. I'm not there and I'm not talking to anyone. I'm only going by what they give me about what's going on over there. But it's horrible, in my opinion. It, I, yeah, I don't, I I, yeah, I don't see how can people face that every day. It, it, to me, it's just horrible what they're doing to the women making them do those things and by men uh, who say that's what we want. You know, it, it's just horrible what's happening to those women. Then when they get to prison, uh, when they get arrested for protesting, they get treated horribly in the jails, in the prison. I don't know, jails, prison, whatever they go to there. 
when they get arrested. And I like what you did with this film. It's very contemporary. Yes. But um, I don't know if you uh, noticed all these posters in the background. There are a lot of posters of um, you know, selling a pizza, selling cell phones, selling champagne. But if you noticed, if you were noticing this, all these objects were sold by using the part of the woman, taking the mouth of the woman to sell a pizza, using the leg of the woman to, to sell a, a bag. So in this uh, commercials, I wanted also to show the second part that also in the Occident, there is some kind that we are using women to sell something. So it's perhaps different, but it's also existing abroad. So I tried to, 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 to show a bit of both sides. I don't know if it worked out, but that's what I tried to do all, with all these posters. And I finished also the movie with a poster where we see a woman um, giving commercial for uh, shampoo. But when we go close to her face and we see that she's not really smiling or it's a force. Yeah. Smile. Yeah, I, uh, I, I saw those posters. But to me, they seem normal because that's what they do here with the posters, women, sex, and them. things like that. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. I saw him, but I didn't really relate it to the film. Yeah. I'm glad you pointed out to me. But Simon, let me ask you about yourself. You're a filmmaker. You did a few shorts. How did you get into filmmaking? Why did you get into filmmaking? Actually, I have uh, to tell you that uh, we left Iran when I was five years old. So mm -hmm. uh, we, we uh, the planes were uh, cut down when there was the revolution and there were the last buses going away and i we took the last bus going away before the borders closed and i saw all these bombings and actually i thought it's fireworks you know i thought it's a party and then we came to luxembourg and i grew up here and it was difficult for me to communicate because there were three languages and i i even could understand nothing and, uh, and very, very early in my life, I could uh, communicate it with drawings, with drawing stories. So related very, very fast to pictures. And actually, the, I grew up with this because the time you need to learn the language and so on, I got uh, used to capturing pictures, telling stories by drawing pictures. And suddenly I had a camera and then, you know, <laughs> we, did a, we did a short movie. It, it happened just like this. Uh, wow. So... Ever since you left your country, you always wanted to tell the story of, in your mind, what's going on and, and show other people, this is what's going on according to you. Not exactly. I was uh, drawing to communicate first. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, great. Or yeah. Doing, or doing, I was not in the idea of uh, doing pictures to tell story which I was in my mind. I was doing pictures to communicate with people. Like uh, I couldn't, express myself. I, so I was drawing something and was showing this and they were understanding this. So we were communicating. It was more in that way in the beginning. Oh, okay. Because I never really hear a filmmaker say, well, I'm just really communicating the stories and things like that, trying to communicate with people, many directors and people who, who uh, were in the film business. Well, I'm just doing this. It's a work of art and things like that. You know, they never talk about the communication part of it. I, I, I like that a lot. And uh, so, so what's next for you? What are you going to do next? So uh, on the, in March, I will uh, shoot my first uh, future film, uh, which is wow, called The Shelter. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Which is called The Shelter. And before this, I had two other short movies, which I did, uh, where I won, I mean, we have also in Luxembourg, the Luxembourgish Oscars. So I won the Luxembourgish Oscar 2018 and 2021. <clears throat> Congratulations. So then I, yeah, then I got slowly the funds to do my future film. And as this future film was a bit long to put in place, so I decided to do one more short movie. So I finished this short movie now and the future film is waiting on March. So. Oh, wow. Well, congratulations. Well, Cyrus, thank you for taking time with me, Al McGee, here at yeticket.com. The Red Suitcase, I would recommend for many people, many people to see this short film because it tells a lot about 
how you communicating your story, but also your message also. Thank yeah. you, Cyrus. I really yeah, appreciate it. I'll tell you the, the last sentence that the, the, move, the, the short movie is uh, qualified for the Oscars and it's right now on the platform. So, uh, you know, one click and you can watch this movie and uh, which is important is to, to see this movie even to see what's going on in Iran. So uh, I invite every person to go and watch this movie for himself on the Oscar qualifying platform. Thank you very much for telling us that. I really appreciate it. Thank Have you. a great day and a great life. I appreciate you. Bye-bye. This is your entertainment ticket. Latest and great.